What's up, everybody? I'm Kiyoshi. Michael Beveraji. And this is Take Away My Mic. Hey. It's a special episode. Yeah, a little fun one for you guys. Yeah, just something cute, because not a whole lot going on this week. Um, so much music is coming, forthcoming. So obviously we're going to be doing album breakdowns and things like that. But when there's nothing interesting happening in pop culture, we are going to bring... We do this on Patreon as well, like our drafts and stuff. So I thought about this one today, and today we're going to be drafting our favorite problematic movies. <laughs> yeah, this was this was Maya's idea came to me with it and um i'm ready i feel like you might be more ready because it was your idea you might have some more movies in mind than me but uh i i I, as i was coming up with my list i was like oh i started getting excited about a lot of these movies because a lot of these movies i still love literally (laughs) even though i can point out the real problematic shit about them um so it's gonna be fun to like kind of break down a little bit the the bad shit about the movies that i love yeah i feel i I only picked 10. I think we're going to go to 10. Yeah, we'll go to I don't, 10. I don't have any backup, so I'm praying he doesn't steal any of mine. Um, but these are all movies that I still very much love today and watch, but don't talk about. Because, <laughs> because they've just so, is so many things, but they're all still entertaining. Um, and yeah, we just want to see who, can, who has the worst one. And then at the end, you guys are going to pick who wins. That's right. That's how it goes. You guys let us know in the comments. General consensus. We'll see who wins. And we keep track of winners with these drafts. We overall, do. Because we, we love to do these drafts. We're going to continue doing these drafts. Um, with music especially. Like, that's stuff that we really enjoy doing too. So we, we incorporate the movies and the music best we can with these drafts. Um, so yeah, and also like leave your comments about like the movies that we don't talk about, the problematic movies yeah. that y'all are into and, and think that maybe we could have brought up here. And we obviously know problematic includes everything from homophobia, fat phobia, xenophobia, transphobia, everything, everything, you know, yeah. and the, in the 2000s are swarmed with it. <laughs> It's in it. It's like so bad. How many of those things are like actual plot lines and like affect the characters and things and language and all of that? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know that recent Jenna Ortega movie? I that do she not. did with the professor and he's like Martin Freeman. You don't I know? I have no clue what you're talking right. about. What is all it? Right. Well, we'll just—I didn't watch it, so there's not much to talk about. But like the premise of it seems problematic, and like there's not a lot of more recent problematic movies. So I was interested in watching that just because. Well, I love Jenna Ortega, um, but it, wait, like, it's a student professor thing. Student professor like romance thing. I I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it, but that's Ooh. that's the premise. You know who Martin Freeman is? I do not. I'm about he, to get on Google. What does man look like? He just just Google Martin Freeman. I'm scared. I'm scared. And then that's all you need to just think about the fact the two of them in a romance movie. <laughs> yeah. Um. So if y'all have seen that movie, let me know how it that is. That man is fifty two. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. in a romance movie. I yeah. I don't and uh, yeah. I don't know if like they actually get get it on or anything in the film, but that's definitely the premise. Oh, period. He's five seven. Short king. All right. Hey. You know the vibes. <laughs> We love short kings over here. Yeah. Um, that's interesting, and I, why do I want to watch that? Because do you think Jenna Ortega is just extremely well, exactly, talented. exactly? And, and if she chose to do it, then I feel like there has to be some type of twist. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like she, yeah, she's not trying to like offend her new audience that terribly, right? Like so. Yeah, she likes uh, weird shit. So I'm, I'm, I'm I kind of yeah, want to see. you're right. Yeah, Wednesday and Scream, and yeah, she's into <laughs> definitely like certain choices. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, let's let's. Oh, we gotta flip a coin. Yeah, let's do that. Let me see if I could do it on the screen this time. I always pull my phone up, but we're professionals. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. You definitely do. Just put your on Patreon. Put your phone up to the screen. Yeah, you should just put my phone up to the screen. But we're on YouTube. You're on YouTube this time, so we're prof- doing it yeah, the yeah, professional yeah. Let's, way. Let, yeah, let's clean it up. Let's clean it. Up. <laughs> let's clean it up <laughs> for the channel. All right. Yeah, there's like one that maybe you could steal from me if you remember that. I love it so much because I definitely talked about it. I will be very surprised if we don't have at least one. I'm thinking two. Oh, fuck. All right. Let's see here. 
I could have definitely seen now more if we were doing TV shows too. Oh well, there's. God. I was thinking about that too. Well, we talked openly about Euphoria. I'm the biggest Office fan ever. Like, there's some real oh easy TV, tele, some really easy television choices. <laughs> <laughs> the Office alone, bro. Damn. Yeah, yeah. The Office is a rough one. Uh, let me know if you can see. I this. can. Okay, you see the coin on the screen? Yeah, flip that coin. I want heads. I always want heads. Head. You want heads? Okay, I'll take tails, and I'm going to press flip again. Come I've on, never on. I've never won. I've never won. God damn it. Period. <laughs> I can continue to take L's on the coin flip. <laughs> I've literally never picked first. Reigning champ. All right, let's get back to this. I always forget how to fix this. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, we did it. Okay. I'm the reigning champ. Thank you. Thank you very much. <sighs> okay, make that first pick. I'm... Drum roll. Okay. <sighs> Lots of if, shoes. If, we, if there was one, uh, this would probably be one of the ones, if you did, that we would have it together. So I'm going to just do this first. Um, My first pick is Mean Girls. Okay. That's a really good pick. It's a really good pick. Lots of lots of R word bombs in there. A little fat phobia, a little homophobia. You know, very entertaining nonetheless. Did you watch the re the Renee rap several times version? Oh, you've seen it. Okay. How did the, how did I haven't watched it? How did they do on the cleaning that stuff up? As far as that, like, how's the how's the remake? They cleaned it up, and I see why people were like. This is not the point of Mean Girls. Da, da, da. People forget like it's an adaptation yeah. of the musical. Yeah, people didn't like that movie. I, I hear. Yeah, it's there's there's some problems with it <laughs> that go <laughs> that go beyond like the context and shit. The girl who played Katie could not sing. I'm sorry, that don't sound that sounds me. The girl could not. She could not sing. We gotta like stop casting non-singers and like singers. And I loved her in Spider-Man. So when I saw that she was Katie, I was like, oh, cute. Spider-Man. She well, played, um, we get, what's Tom which, Holland's best friend? Oh, oh. His girlfriend when they went on that, I forget which movie. I'm not super familiar. When they went to, when they went on that overseas trip and the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the girl yeah. he fell in love with on the, on the plane. And when they got there, they were all lovey-dovey and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, damn. Yeah, so when I saw she was Katie, I was like, oh, cute. I can't wait to hear her voice. And then we heard it. And I was like, oh. There's so many singers that are also actors. Like, it's so easy to just find somebody to play these roles. I don't And what sucks that. that I liked her songs, I just didn't like them sing her singing them. Damn. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was okay. It was you got her next to Renee Rapp too. Who's like It was unfair. <laughs> like it that's was <laughs> unfair. That's that's wild. That's, they didn't um, they, they didn't think about that shit at all. Everybody was everybody could sing except her and it was I was just like damn. Anyway, um, yeah, Mean Girls is iconic. Uh also very problematic. Mean Girls was a backup pick for me. Like I have my ten, and then I have my two backups. It's one of my backups, so I'm I'm still safe. We're still not overlapping. Okay. Mean Girls very. Pro I agree. Um, the only reason I didn't have it in my main is because I haven't seen it in a very long time. Um, and I try to keep those. Like I want to remember most of the shit that happened in, in these movies I picked. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go with one that I definitely thought you were gonna pick first, and if prob I Please might don't. be up. Might be on your list. It should be on your list. Please don't. I'm going to pick Twilight. Oh, it's not. Thank God. All right. Well, I'm going to just take the whole series. Like, <laughs> T! <laughs> <laughs> For those of y'all that don't know, I, I just watched Twilight. I just finished watching Twilight. And like. You finished oh, Breaking Dawn Part 2? Is it up on your Patreon? Yeah, it's up there. Yeah, it's up there. <laughs> I just didn't... Hey, bro, bro. I got my Vietnamese food for after we're done filming. <laughs> And my and my Thai iced tea, that is what I will be fucking That's watching. Awesome. That's all I'm so excited. Sorry. Yeah. I love no. Michael's reactions. So like I finished and he's been doing yeah, Twilight. Yeah. Yesterday I finished it. Yeah. Oh, I, so I watched right. all five movies and I love like I love the movies. They're actually like there's so many flaws. There's so many issues with the movies. She doesn't know what she wants. They're hilarious, but like they're really entertaining. They're really fucking entertaining. But like, let's touch on the problematic stuff, right? Like Bella's dependence is kind of wild in that movie. Um, Bro, you been talking about New Moon? 
New Moon changed the wiring of my mind when well, I was it's a child. The second, the second one, right? And I'm yeah, it's the second one. Where she was like, if when I have will... to, if I have to find danger to see him, and she jump off the cliff it. and stuff, and like just to, just so he would come back to her. What's a... I was simply an impressionable yeah. child. I was <laughs> I was simply an impressionable middle schooler reading these books. Like, oh my god, that's so romantic. She jumped <laughs> off a fucking cliff. <laughs> jumped off a cliff for him. Oh my god, this is real love. Did you did did you forget about this movie, or these movies for this draft? I feel like it's such a like I feel like this is a great pick. It's an excellent pick, and I forgot because of how much I love those movies. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, so yeah, exactly. You get caught up in like how much how. Hey, bro, like, my ringtone has been Bella's lullaby since high school. It's never changed. It's never oh, changed. <laughs> <laughs> it's my shit. It really is. Yeah. Those I I grew up on those books, and I feel like they're ingrained in me to the point that I'm just like, yeah, I never do this as an adult, but still, Twilight eats. <laughs> yeah, there's. I haven't even. Like Edward watching Bella sleep. You could talk about like the age difference if you want to. I personally don't. Didn't think much, I didn't think a lot about it during the movie, but yeah, like sure, he's like a hundred years old. But the worst Jacob. part, Jake Jacob is the worst part by far. It's not even close, especially yeah, the third movie. But like he assaults Bella. He's trying to like gaslight her, manipulate her. He threatens suicide when they kiss. He threatens suicide. He's like, I'm just gonna go kill myself in the forest. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because like, yeah. he finds out that they're that she's gonna marry Edward and then all like now he has to go to the worst possible place. No, like, I said it <laughs> These movies are crazy. No, they're really bad. They're they're yeah, from that sense, yeah, really, really, really bad. Really bad. I said it earlier, but that line is burning my brain. It's like she doesn't know what she wants. Yes, <laughs> she doesn't excuse, know what she wants. Excuse me. She's excuse made it crystal me. fucking clear. Every, she literally said every chance she gets. She says, "Yeah, the, I like you, but it's him, here. bro. It's him. It's always been Edward. I'm so very sorry." And then all of his shit when it was in the tent in Eclipse. And he was like, oh, with the warming her up, take, and he was like, take yeah. your clothes off. I was like, yo, <laughs> yeah. he's fucking gross. He's like, <laughs> yeah. he's the absolute worst. <laughs> so that's, a, that's a great pick. Damn. Right. I there's a thinking. lot. That, there's so much. And if if we take something that's part of a series, you just got to take the whole series. You can't like nitpick movies. That like, as No, this, they're all bad. There's something all in all of them. of them. There's something in every single one of them to, to pick from as far as the toxicity and the problematic uh, things go. So this was like my easy number one. Pack. Damn, you might whoop my ass in this. I didn't. The I, way Twilight didn't even come to my. I've been brainwashed. I don't know, cause like to be honest, the rest of my picks after this, <sighs> I feel good about. But to me, Twilight is just it's not even close. The rest yeah, of them, like you can make a case for not being that problematic. I don't know. So we'll see where it goes. Damn. Okay. See, so, um, what's my? <laughs> let me grab my head. What's my heaviest hitter on this list? Let me see. <laughs> let me see. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I pick a classic. This is a classic comedy family, probably one of my favorite comedy families, the Wayans family. Oh, um, you want white chicks? I pick white chicks. Yeah, yeah, white chicks is a great pick. I pick. I pick I'm sorry. Chicks. I'm sorry to yell your pick before you said it, but that no, you're good. That movie is a classic, though. You got everything up in there. You got white girl saying n word. You got white. <laughs> Just the representation of like women too, like the way they represent women is kind of wild. <laughs> like, so, this is what a woman is. <laughs> so crazy. So yeah. we have we have manipulation, emotional and sexual manipulation, just all types of things in there. The Wayne's brothers, I gotta be honest, like low key, the Wayne's brothers kind of raised me. Like what? Whether it's T, white no, chicks, me too. Whether it's um the show, the their Wayne's show. Brothers, whether it's scary movie and Marlon Wayne's and, and all those movies, like. I love it. It's love and basketball. I can go on and on. Like I love the Wayne's brothers hard. Oh, my wife and kids, the Damon Wayne's like, yo, all of the Wayne's brothers fucking raised the shit out of me. Taste. Taste. So that's it. That pick is the perfect example of problematic, but part of my heart forever. No, for real. I love white (laughs) chick. I love white chicks, but the image of Terry Crews on the ground, like, didn't you hear that this was an all white party? Somebody get this jigaboo away from me. (laughs) Like, it's 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 horribly great. It's oh my god! Horribly great. Oh my god! Yeah. And Terry, the ang- Terry angry, angry black woman trope. The way they portrayed wow. his uh, uh, Marlon's wife or whatever the fuck. I hate. I was mm-hmm. like, God damn. 
That's a good call. So bad. It's all very bad and all still hilarious as hell. No, nah, it's a really good call. Um, all right. I like I like where all this is going. I think yeah, you yeah, have yeah. Two great picks. <laughs> I am going to go with again. I don't. I feel like I'm almost like taking away from a victory by saying out loud. I don't think any of these are on the level of Twilight, but I think these are great picks. And I thought very hard about all of these. Like I wasn't trying okay. to make nothing too obvious. I was trying to like really think about it. Uh, my second pick is Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> my second pick is Beauty and the Beast. Um Oh my god, I didn't even think about cartoons. Bro! I mean, think about it. I, before I even say anything, just think about it. Let it sit for a second. Let it sit and think Disney about this. Princesses lo- is alone. This is this, bad for me. This love story <laughs> between these two. There's you could there's definitely a few Disney films you could pick at. Um, oh my I think god. This, I think this is the only one that I have, but this is the one that strikes me the most because the whole like like she just belt like just endures emotional and physical abuse from him. You could say maybe not physical, but he's definitely like threatening her and scaring her throughout the movie. He, he was tossing her around a little bit too. He's like imprisons her and the whole like I can save him <laughs> like thing. The whole movie is basically like based off of her ideal of I can save him, which is a huge t- toxic trope in society, obviously. So and um, then we- Gaston. Jesus. Gaston, too, is like, well, yeah, if you just like, isolate him as a character by itself, he's incredibly toxic on, on his own right. That's a, that's it, a good pick. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm mad. That's all I got for Beauty of the Beast, but that's definitely one. I think that's also the only animated one I have, as well as Disney one, but that's definitely one that stuck out to me. That's. It always has. Oh. It always has. Damn. 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 Now I have to find. I. I like matching what you do. <laughs> okay. At least a little bit contextually. Are you going with I, I Can Save Him or the animated? No, 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 no. I feel like that's like, uh, I watched it when I was a kid, so I consider that to be like a childhood movie, Beauty and the Beast. So I'm going to pick another childhood movie um, that is extremely iconic and also extremely problematic themes. I pick Matilda. Ooh. I thought very long and hard about that one. But we have a lot of mental, emotional, and physical child abuse in that movie. I need to, I don't, first of all, shout out to Harry Styles. (laughs) My favorite song on Harry's house is Matilda. And it makes me fucking, like I I went to see Harry in concert. He sang Matilda and I've never cried harder because because of a lot of the Matilda Con, like concepts and being a kid and being mistreated and all that, but um, I don't. I haven't seen the movie in a very long time. I just know the premise and what it's about. It's one of my absolute favorite movies, like ever, mm. ever, 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 ever in life. I love Matilda a lot, but um, the trunch bowl, the the head person for the school, she was putting kids in the chokey and tossing them by their pigtails across the fence and shit. Problematic. Very, very. It's like a like a, a she school. Lot, she ran a school. A lot of those movies and TV shows that depict that, it's always problematic. Like the like the school, whether it's all girls or private school or Catholic school, whatever it is, like it's always problematic. Yeah. So I was just like, yes, yeah, a lot of child abuse in that movie. I put it on my list. I love okay. Mat- Matilda. It's an excellent movie. <laughs> That's a great it. pick. That's a great pick. That's a great pick. Yee. Um. Especially because it strikes the Harry Styles chord with me, too. You get extra points for that for me. Yeah. Pick uh, me in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Third pick. Got Twilight. Got Beauty and the Beast. I'm going to go back to um, a depiction that my favorite actor played in. Um, Romeo and Juliet. Romeo I'm guessing Juliet. the Leonardo version. Yeah. The Leonardo version, but like that, just the, the actual story of it. The actual story of it. The Leonardo version is Baz Luhrmann, Leonardo, um, uh, uh, what's her name? Claire Dane. Claire Dane. Claire Dane, yeah. She was great in it too. Uh, just the story of it though. More than just that depiction, the entire story of it. They know each other for one day. They know each other for one day and... It ends in suicide. It ends in suicide because they can't be without each other, which is a pretty pretty problematic narrative to like 
put out there. <laughs> like, if if you, like, can't be with the person that you met for one day and fell in love with, you should kill yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, I love, that's all I got, I, yeah. I love this movie. I love this movie, and I love... I love a I love a love movie. Maya knows this. Love yeah, movies, yeah, yeah. Love stories, romance movies. For me, those are my number one favorite genre of choice, whether it's music or film. But I gotta call out um, the the problematic uh, points. No, in this you're film. you're absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Damn, that's a good pick too. Damn. 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 Okay. Pick four. Um, it's me thinking if I want to go with something fantasy and whimsical. Mm. Mm. Oh, God. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Just bouncing off of my last pick as well, since we're still in the children area, because they were definitely like 14 years old. People forget about that. Romeo and Juliet were kids. Juliet, Juliet was 13 in Shakespeare's novel, and Romeo was a little bit older. <laughs> I don't know what? how old I think he was supposed to be older as far as the actual story goes. I know that like the, the actors were of like a similar age, but I feel like as far as the actual story goes, I know Juliet was 13 because I've read the actual Shakespeare version. Romeo was older. I don't remember how much older, but I think he's older. Sheesh. I don't know, but I read it too. But yeah, it's a, she's 13 and then think about the whole story. It's kind of wild. Like married in one day. Like, yeah, it's all crazy. Yick. All right. Um. Oh my God. It's one of my favorite movies ever one of my favorite movies ever probably my favorite jim carrey movie ever oh and Car it's a series of unfortunate events let me snickets a series of unfortunate events there's a movie i've seen like the first the tv of... the tv show don't don't you dare don't do it I, I watched it with um what's that guy's name the blonde guy neil what's patrick name? harris yes yes i watched like the first season I don't remember a whole lot about it, but I, I refuse to watch it because anything other than the original in my mind is a mockery. I knew there was a book and that show. I did not know there was a movie. I read the books as a child. I saw the movie in theaters with my grandmother. I begged her to take me. Um, it is excellent, but also has a lot of child abuse. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of mental, physical child abuse. He very much um, parks the car on train tracks and then goes inside and and waits, and she, he timed it so that the train could hit the car. Um, but the children were smart and escaped. <laughs> okay. He just keeps trying to kill these kids so he can get their inheritance. Their parents that, were like, oh, that is what it's multi, about. multi, multi, multi millionaires, and and he also killed their parents. I'm telling the whole movie. I'm so sorry. Um, I mean, once you start talking about it, if the audience isn't skipping forward, it's on you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's a great movie. By the um, way, spo spoilers for every movie we talk about. We should about. have said that up top. Oh, my God. Spoilers for every movie we talk about. If we mention the movie as, as our pick, as soon as we do that, just skip forward a few seconds or, or minutes. Sorry, or guys. It's also because all these movies are old, and I, it's in my mind thinking that everybody's already seen these movies. But... Yeah, yeah. No, it's so good. It's so good and um i wanted a part two to the movie because they only covered like half of the books i was like are y'all gonna do the rest of the story they didn't do it and they did that series instead so i was like maybe i'll go and watch the episodes of the books that were not in the movie but the movie is iconic and very classic and i i was like don't touch it i love your 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 first two picks are like iconic sort of like film your last two picks to me are like a bag reaching, like really clever, really smart. Like, Thank you. That Matilda pick is fire, and I feel like this pick is a pick that I would have never thought about in a thousand. Anybody years. who's seen this movie knows like how much he was wilding. Like he was just, just child wilding, abuse. bro. Child abuse. Oh got, no! Oh yeah! And then no back to back um, child abuse picks. Tried to marry the daughter as well. He's a very old man, like a clearly old man, and Violet is like sixteen or something like that. And um, he he once he found out that even after adopting the kids, he wouldn't get the income until she turned eighteen, unless she was married first. So he was her legal guardian and signed that she could get married to him, so that he could access their inheritance. Now, the movie is crazy as hell. There That's is. Game of Thrones type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah <laughs> like, very, type, yeah. Type bullshit. Yeah, which, by the way, would also probably number one most problematic yeah. when you talk about, like, 
Yeah, everything. Like special so child stuff. bride and all of that. All that. Yeah, shit child everywhere. brides and all that. Yeah. Um, yep. Okay, some heavy shit. Some heavy shit. You went back to back with the really heavy shit. Um, <laughs> all my rest. All the rest of mine are fun. <laughs> Uh man, I and I'm. Am I gonna go with heavy too to keep the heaviness going? I'm gonna break it out. Whatever you do next. All right, whatever you're gonna help me out with breaking that out. All right, I'm gonna I go. I'm gonna go really heavy. Okay, I'm scared. Uh, first of all, I fucking love this movie. I want to preface. I want to preface that it's one of my favorite movies ever. It's one of my favorite performances by a particular actor ever. Um, but I gotta. Uh, you gotta like. It's complicated because some of the stuff is accurate and like brutal in a way that needs to be brutal so that the audience can understand that this shit was really happening. Django Unchained. Oh my God. Django Unchained. Like the depiction of the slavery is brutal and what they're going through is brutal. And like they depict that and there's, that's, great as far as like informing people like hey this shit was really 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 happening but mm-hmm. that movie tries to be really funny and it's like pretty problematic when you think about that you got the kkk i love, I love that movie <laughs> i it's one of my favorite movies of all time my of t- all time my- i also i also feel like quentin, quentin tarantino has this crazy itch to use the n-word in his real person bro life. that shit is real that's a real thing and he uses these movies as like an outlet for him to be able to scratch that itch the KKK scene is one of my favorite scenes it's in all so of film. It's so fucking funny. In all of film. It's... I'm fucking with my hoe. <laughs> <laughs> I watched my wife slave over 30 bags for you ungrateful sons of bitches. Next time don't ask me or mine for nothing. It's so like, I, I remember the first time I watched that shit. I, pee, I promise you I peed. I was like, bro, it, this is so... It's this like, is, yo, I'm laughing at a KKK scene right now. This is crazy. It was. He was like, so what are we going to do? He's like, can you see? He's like, it'd be nice to see. It was just <laughs> hilarious, bro. Yeah. It was really funny. It was mm-hmm. really funny. And I laughed so hard. Yes, 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 yes. It is so problematic. You're absolutely correct. <laughs> And I was talking about Leo. Leo's on fire once he once he comes into that movie. He oh is like God. no holds bar. Like the the scene where he breaks his hand on the glass, which was improv, and he gets the blood on his hands. And man, when I found out that was improv, I leapt out of my Wild. skin. I was like, man, Wild. Wild. <laughs> Wild. And he but won he, an Oscar for Revenant. I'm sorry. I know you like that movie, but No, he should he deserved an Oscar for Django Unchained. Yeah. He no, I, really fucking did. I was I, so totally. Completely, Man. yeah. If there's any movie, that one and another one, but I don't want to say the other one yet for a certain reason. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. Uh, go ahead, it's your pick. Jingle. Oh fuck you! Oh fuck you! I'm adding Jingle. it to my list. Fuck you! Jingle I know Jingle. exactly what you're talking about. Oh, absolutely not! Oh my god, you are not doing this to me. I know exactly what movie you have on your list over there. You might not. I do. I don't think you do. Look me in my face. (laughs) (laughs) It's the way I want to pick it just to see if it was on your list. I know it's coming. I don't fucking care. It's fine. Um, (laughs) I'm going to pick... Okay. This movie shaped culture for a while. Um, An iconic movie. An iconic cast extremely problematic i picked devil wears prada uh have i that's what meryl streep right meryl streep anne hathaway emily blunt i don't think i've seen that either you've never <laughs> seen devil wears prada i don't think i have i just know meryl streep is in it <clears throat> sorry my body is revolting <clears throat> what do you mean oh my god devil wears prada um what's problematic about it Yeah, there's so much, like, one of the main themes is fat phobia. That's a huge thing, because it's models, and it's all of that. And they promote, it's eating disorders. It's all of that shit is up in there. Um, Emotional manipulation via personal relationship. The main character's boyfriend is ass, Mm -hmm. and and we famously hate him. Um, But also workplace abuse. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. Miranda Priestly is a monster. She's she's just 
very evil and very fabulous. Um, this one sounds like it covers a lot. Like you've got like four different categories of problematic. It's such a good movie, though. It's such a good iconic film. Um, everyone should watch watch it at least once. <laughs> All right, I definitely gonna add it to the list of shit that I need to watch. Yeah, I've heard I've heard a ton about that film. Just as far as its iconic stature, I've never heard like problematic things though. But definitely gotta check it out. Yeah, yeah. I picked um, it for the fat phobia because it's, it's it's literally mm-hmm. from out the gate. <laughs> like right away, like right like, in the face. I told I told them to send me um a slender fashionable girl, and they sent you. <laughs> it's like it's bad. It's like it. Oh my god, it's so bad. Um, but it's a great movie yeah. though. All right. Um, I feel like that one covered based on how you described it. That one sounds like it might cover the most categories. I feel like it's a great pick from that standpoint, especially because I haven't seen it, but I know our audience is gonna have like everyone's seen that movie. Oh, I'm gonna get major points for that. Ding 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 ding. Yeah. Ding. Um, you scared the fuck out of me, and I don't trust you. I <laughs> just do it. Just trust- do it, friend. Trust you with all my heart as a friend, but not in this game. <laughs> uh, Wolf, I'm going Wolf of Wall Street next. I knew it. I was going to write it down and break your I, damn I'm, heart. I'm going Wolf of Wall Street next. That movie's fucking Everything. insane. That movie's it's from start to finish. They are, they are. If you haven't seen Wolf of Wall Street, it's two hours I don't know, of. I don't know where to start. Right. I don't know where to start. Sexual harassment, sexual coercement. Um, the female, every female in that movie is an object. Yeah, to, yeah. to these to these men, yeah. all of them. Uh, there's a scene like Jonah Hill's like completely has his dick out at one point because he's like he's like jerking off in front of the Margot Robbie or something. I think yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, there, yeah, he's so so attracted to her that he pulls it out on the spot and just starts. Um, the the uh um, they are playing with little people. Like yes, literally playing with them as targets. Oh, about that. Like like they're darts and they're throwing them at like dart boards, like with like Velcro on them. It's fucking crazy. It might be the most problematic movie out of all of these, honestly. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Why that, didn't I think about that? That movie is crazy. crazy. Another movie that I bought and I love and I watch so much that I've been desensitized. <laughs> This is my this is my favorite Leo performance out of all his movies. It's Wolf of Wall Street and Revolutionary Road, but Wolf of Wall Street. He that him on the ludes. Dr- when he's crawling to the car, yeah, drugs. I I didn't even mention drugs. Drugs are like the main part of the story. Yeah, all of them, all drugs. <laughs> he's and, <laughs> and the ludes are kind of depicted as like this really fun time, but then they also show like. The crawl into the car, where like how serious it can be. Like, yeah, it's just wild. Yep, yep, yep. Wild. Like Martin, Martin Scorsese. Yeah, just um. And cinematically, it's, <laughs> it's like the the pills and the liquor just flying through the air. Yep. The, the yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> it's it's so cinematically gorgeous. You're just like, what the fuck am I watching? I can't believe Martin Scorsese like made that movie. I can't believe this man is attached to this movie. Also, I have three Leonardo DiCaprio picks so far, which is that's my guy. But like, he just embraces problematic movies, <laughs> um, so it just makes sense. Okay, damn, that was an excellent pick. We're halfway through. We each got five. I don't think you've seen this movie, but it's one of my favorites ever. It's called Bringing Down the House. I know what the movie is, but no, I haven't seen it. With Queen Latifah. Who else is in the movie? Steve Martin. Eugene Levy. It's like, it's a it's a cast. This is a pretty good cast. Betty White plays a racist neighbor. I was going to say, like... Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's all, it's racism. Oh my God, it's racism. You said, you said Queen Latifah, and then you said... Racism. The, name, the names that follow, I was like, what is this? And she's, uh, she, she's a, she's a... <laughs> a ex felon and and starts dating online dating with Steve Martin and sends him a picture of a very skinny blonde haired white woman that he thinks he's gonna meet. Oh, and she catfished him. And the then movie? Queen Latifah shows up at his door in her jean shorts and her jean top and her hair all crazy and she's like, "Hey, 
She pulled up. She did what that one girl did to that guy on Twitter the other the other day. Yeah, and then she won't she won't leave his house. And Which she was just bullshit, by there. the way. That was wild. Yeah, but a lot of racism. A lot of he's just like, yeah, ghetto and this 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 is really bad. Oh my god, it's so bad. And then no, one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie. If you know this movie, you already know what I'm about to say. The scene where Steve Martin has his uh, one of his clients. He's like, I forget what he did. He was like an insurance sale person. Whatever. He had one of his older white women clients come over to his house for dinner and he forced Queen Latifah to dress up as a maid and a cook and she had an apron on and she was like serving them food and everything. And then the white lady was like, oh, this food is just like, um, just like the old, uh, the lady who used to work for us used to make. And she's very old. Like she's very old. So it oh, gave. Oh, she like, lived during a certain time. It gave, it gave that. So maybe not that, but like directly after is what it gave it. And yeah. she was like, and I used to love the little songs that she used to sing when she was the around the songs. kitchen. And yeah, she, yeah. The it's the way songs. I want to, it's the way I want to sing it, but it's so proper. <laughs> she was like. <laughs> <laughs> it should not be this funny, bro. And she was like, "Please, just don't look at me. Look away." <laughs> like she started singing at the table. She started singing at the table as Queen Latifah was serving. She was like, "Is Master gonna sell us tomorrow?" <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I was like, "Bro, horrible, horrible." And she was just standing there, and Steve Martin was just like. Like, look, at it was, bro. <laughs> this master and then at the end of the movie, tomorrow. there's like a whole bunch of other stuff that happens, but like Steve Martin dresses up in urban attire and goes to a to a club with, with a lot of black people in it and dances around and is the black scent and it's everything. It's mm. horrible. It's so bad and so entertaining. All right. Uh, bringing down the house. I've heard, this is like an early, <laughs> like 2001-ish it gives like 2005, 2006. Okay. Most of these I got like in 2006. I remember this movie existing when I was growing up. I just never like actually sat down and watched it. <laughs> it, sound, it sounds hella entertaining. It's so funny, bro. It should not be so fucking funny. It's so funny. It's so funny. It's so <laughs> racist. There's just racism everywhere. Oh my God. Um... <laughs> All right. Please don't drag me for singing that, y'all. I promise, please. Hey, hey. It was just, so you, funny, bro. You didn't write it. That's very true. <laughs> you did, you're just, uh, you know, explaining why it's problematic. That's all. Sometimes Ooh. that includes a performance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go with, because I just I just rewatched this last night. It was, I remember it being funnier. Like, back when I watched it when I was younger, it was fucking hilarious. It was still pretty funny last night. I'm going to go with Wedding Crashers. Next, I wa- I feel like I watched that movie once. Vince and- Vaughn, Owen Wilson. Um, I-, I watched that movie once, but I never watched it again. Rachel McAdams, Isla Fisher, Isla Fisher. I'm not sure how you say her name. Um, Br- Bradley Cooper. Yeah. Uh, the 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 main part. First of all, it's like the whole wedding crasher concept is problematic in its own right because the whole point is that the, these two guys go to wedding crash weddings and they trick women into sleeping with them. Like oh, they, like they lie about their identity. They lie about their jobs, like their whole background. They just make up a whole story. They pretend to know the families at the wedding and they find like women who are like emotionally like, you know, sad, like, you know, in their bag because they're at a wedding. They're, oh. at a wedding. they're feeling vulnerable because they're at a wedding and then they get these girls to sleep with them. So that in its all right is incredibly problematic. Yeah. Yikes. But then there's like this whole other part of the story where they, I'm kind of giving away a lot of the movie here. So by the way, we said spoilers before mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they ended up meeting these two girls at this, they go to like mad weddings in the movie and you see them. There's like a montage of them sleeping with all these women. And then they meet these two girls that they actually like and fall for at a wedding. And one of the girls um, played by Isla or Isla Fisher I don't know how to say her name again. Um, she she pretends to be a vir like after they slept together, she was like, I'm a virgin, by the way. Like I was a virgin, that was my first time. And she kind of does it so that like he can't leave her. Like she like lies oh. to him, lies to him and kind of tricks him. And then like she's just sexually assaulting him the whole movie. It's comedy, but like she is sexually assaulting she rapes him in the movie. 
Literally, I'm like literally, she rapes him in the movie. Like they even joke about it after it happens. He's like really pissed about the whole, the whole because they have to like go on this trip. It's a lot, but he's pissed. He's talking to his partner like we need to get the fuck out of here. Like I got raped. Like it's fucking. Whoa. Cool. Which like by the way, if the roles were reversed, that would be insane. bro. They, oh my god. They they would have never even written that if it was like gender swapped. Um, yeah. So it kind of also like shows the problematic tendencies of downplaying men getting raped also um but yeah it's uh it's a wild movie when you think about the problematic parts of it if y'all have seen it you definitely know what i'm talking about god damn i don't want to watch it but i heard i I believe everything you're saying i agree she she taught she they go visit the parents house and they've only known each other for like a day she ties him up in the bed like he's asleep and she ties him up and he doesn't like want to be with her and then yeah she does what she does to him jesus it's really wild yeah but yeah Damn, when did that movie come out shit late, like 2006 or something like that it's another early what's 2000. up with 2006 bro they were like, like what? whatever makes people laugh <laughs> whatever makes people laugh that's wow that's crazy as hell um okay i haven't watched this movie in such a long time, but I used to watch it all the time as a kid when my parents weren't home um, because it was about weed. <laughs> it's a movie called Dude, Where's My Car? Ooh. That's a deep oh, cut. No, That's a deep I, cut. Ashton I, Kutcher. I, I've seen that. I've seen that, but I was so young when I saw that. I barely yeah. remember. I thought you were going to go. You said weed, and I thought about the Dave Chappelle movie right away. But yeah, Dude, <laughs> Dude Where's My Car? Absolutely. Hold on, let me write. I'm gonna get his name, cause I know I forget what the other main dude's name is. So it's Sean William Scott. So American Pie, the, and like the American the and American Pie role models. Yeah, shout out to yeah, Sean yeah, William yeah. Scott. and Ashton and Ashton Kutcher. That was one of my favorite Stifler f- favorite fucking movies ever. And <laughs> what's the premise? They just get high and have to find their. They go on this adventure to find the car. They wake up one morning and they. They don't remember the last like night that they partied or whatever. They just they partied so hard they don't remember, and their car is missing, and it had their gifts for their girlfriends. They're dating twins, and they it was like their anniversary or whatever, and they just go on this hunt for their car, and they're like, "What the fuck did we do last night? Where's our car?" Um, <laughs> but it's a lot. It's a lot of partying. It's a lot. I'd say. Some transphobia up in there. No, for real. Some tra- yeah, yeah, definitely. Some transphobia, some homophobia, some uh some sexual assault, some bestiality. Uh yeah. It's okay. a lot going on in that movie, but that was one of my one of my favorite movies ever because of one scene. If you've seen this movie, you, you already know. Um, they go to this Chinese restaurant drive through. <laughs> Chinese restaurant drive through, and they start ordering. And then he's like, yeah, can I get some chicken or whatever? And she's like, all right. And then, and then he keeps going and blah, blah, blah. And then he gets to the end and she's like, and then he was like, no, that's it. Like, that's it. We're done. She was like, and then it just goes on and on and on. <laughs> and then he was like, if you say and then one more time, I'm going to come in there and I'll punch you in the face. And then it's silence. And then she's like, and then, and then, and then, and then. <laughs> it's like, it's so fucking dumb. But it used to make me cry as a child. I used to be cackling at that movie um there's so many of those but I, I could rattle i don't want to rattle them off in case they're on our list but there's so many of those kinds of movies that just like used to make our childhood like you can watch it over and over again and like find the shit funny i used to love that fucking movie for no reason and in the end there's like an alien that turns into a really 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 tall giant hot yeah. woman what is this movie? <laughs> it's it, bro. You gotta watch it. It's crazy. Maybe I didn't watch it because I don't remember. It's Alien. some space shit. It's some other shit. It's some. It's crazy. It's a wild movie. But I, I used to watch it. It only came on HBO, so I had to wait till my parents were at home. <laughs> <laughs> I love that hey. fucking movie. They didn't channel. They didn't channel lock it. Channel oh lock no, HBO. bro! I always had Nickelodeon or something on the back button. I was never getting caught. Okay, <laughs> I'll really quick hit that back button. I, I would like, never get caught because you can't go channel up because they. It's like yo, what? What do you? It's like HBO two or some shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. I have as we wind down, I have less to say about each movie than I did earlier on. So these are gonna be quicker picks for me, probably. Okay. 
Um, I saved like the stuff I really have more to say about in the beginning. Um, but that being said, I'm going with a top three favorite movie of all time for me. Next up. Um, so I don't care how offensive it is. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's my favorite comedy of all time. Oh God, I'm scared. Super bad. Oh hell yeah! S- hell yeah! Super bad. The damn, and- I thought about that too, and I didn't write it down. The whole premise of Super Bad. The whole premise. You can break down scenes and shit like that, but the whole premise is how are we gonna get these girls drunk so we can sleep with them? That's the whole premise. Yeah, that is literally. That's the whole movie from start to finish. Literally, the whole movie is. What's the plan? How are we going to get them drunk? How are we going to get them fucked up? No, that's that's not enough alcohol. They're not going to be fucked up enough for, for yep. us to sleep with them. That's the whole movie. That's a crazy premise. Like, so as problematic goes, mm-hmm. that's up there. And yeah, it's like the funniest movie ever made. I, I don't know. <laughs> then you have cops hanging out with a kid. Cops? You have cops hanging out with kids? I am McLovin. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> that's great. That's a great fucking movie. Yeah. That's a great pick. I cannot tell you... That's like the most, oh man, my t- top three of, of all my time. Dad, it's the way my dad tried to watch that movie with me when I was like in ninth grade in high school. And was, and we out. didn't make it five minutes in. We got to when they were at the convenience store and he was like, all right, let me go ahead and turn this off. Yeah. And he's like, did you, he's like, I, I brought the lube. <laughs> yeah. He's like, why you bring lube? Yeah. That movie, like as a writer, that movie has inspired me in ways that I'll never be able to even explain. That's a great fucking pick. Oh, uh, all right. I'm gonna go with this is the girl pick too. You might not have seen this. Eighth pick. Eighth pick. Okay. I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick the movie called The Hot Chick. Never heard of it. Have you heard of that movie? Hold on. Let me go find the cast again. <laughs> I used to watch this movie so much when I was younger, and it stars uh, Rob Schneider, Rachel, Rachel McAdams, Anna Faris. All the girls are in this movie, and um, basically Rachel, it's about Rachel McAdams. Rachel McAdams and Rob Schneider swapping bodies because of some magic earrings. So he's he's <laughs> he turns into her, and she's Jessica, and then she turns into him, and he's like this this thief crazy robbing dude that just be running around the streets and shit. So lots of homophobia, some transphobia up in there. Um, and they have to, and then it's just Rick and Rachel McAdams trying to get her body back. And it's a time. What? Is, I'm looking at the IMDb page for what is this? A time. It's a time. <laughs> it came out in 2002. Yeah. Um, and she's really mean and like, nobody really likes her. And like, it's like all of that. And it's, and he's this 40 year old man. (laughs) Yeah. Adam Sandler giving Rob Schneider that career (laughs) is wild. Like what it ended up turning into like a lot of these movies that ended up coming out because of like all the Rob Schneider cameos. Um, it's very insane. Post Adam Sandler movies. Adam Sandler's literally in that movie too. He plays a, a drug dealer in a shop. Of course, yeah. they're inseparable. Like they're inseparable. <laughs> but I love that movie. I loved that movie as a kid. I was like Rachel McAdams has always been iconic. Oh my god. Um, shout out to Little Dicky, who has a song called Mister McAdams. Okay. Where he play? Where he put Rachel McAdams was in the show Dave. Okay. Show- like a three episode arc where she plays his love interest and the show's based on like real life. So like he's actual, little, he's actually a Dickie. He's actually a rapper in the show and she's actually Rachel McAdams. And he makes a song called Mr. McAdams where it's like the whole song is like, I want to be missed. Like I dream of being Mr. McAdams. <laughs> like, cause you're welcome you're, to the club. Exactly. Cause you're Rachel McAdams. Like in my dream world, I'm Mr. McAdams. Mm-hmm. That's about right. That's um, right. Who's also in Wedding Crashers, which I picked a couple. Of, so we got a couple of Rachel McAdams picks in here. Yeah. Is she in Mean Girls? She is the Mean Girl. So we have several Rachel McAdams yes. picks here. That's what's up. All right, I'll make pick number eight. <laughs> not to not to be a little bit of a sad boy here. Oh hell! But I picked this because I didn't just pick this because of it, but this has always struck a chord. This has always struck a chord in me because I would be this fucking kid just the way I grew up and the lack of giving a shit about me. But anyways, that's besides the point. I pick Home Alone. 
Oh my god, that's a great pick. I always felt like I would have ended up being that kid. Like, how the fuck do you forget this this eight year? Uh, you for, first of all, his family sucks. Like in the beginning, you get to know all of them, and the family is trash. Yeah, the family is already to begin with terrible. All of them, like the brothers, the siblings, the siblings, the aunt, uncle, whatever. Like they're all terrible. But like y'all are going on a trip for like weeks or whatever, and you forget your eight year old kid at home. That is cr- that's like beyond crazy. To Paris, like an international trip, no less. Yeah, like with no, just like, you went on. You trusted a. He- I know they have like a lot of kids, but you trusted a head count or whatever. That's that's insane. That's all I have to say about that. Home Alone problematic <laughs> from that from that standpoint. Uh, child abuse. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my, my god. My first child abuse pick. I had to get one on the board. Sheesh. Okay. Damn. That is a great pick. I didn't think about that either. Oh. I know you're not gonna have my last one, so I'm gonna do this one. You got two more, I think. I do. I'm gonna pick uh eight crazy nights. Oh, i okay. Adam Sandler again. Yeah. We're coming back up. I'm sensing a theme here. Um <laughs> <laughs> Adam Sandler is so problematic. Um, <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, I he love is. that. Fu- I love that movie so much as a kid, and I I bought it. I I own it on physical and digital media. Um, That's a classic. So many, so many problems. Just the songs that they have in it. It's all very problematic. You, 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 listen, homophobia up in there. Talking horrifically about women and their bodies up in there, making fun of short people in there. Like, just, yeah, man. Yeah. I used to cry. That movie used to make me cry at the end because of Whitey. I was like, yo, leave him alone. 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 It like always like just fucked me up like in my chest. I was like, yo, leave, just leave that man alone. It's such a good movie, but that shit used to make me weep at the end when everybody like gave them his little their their brooches and stuff so he could be a winner. I was like, <laughs> and then he had a seizure at the end. <laughs> Damn, I wish I don't remember the movie that well. I remember Whitey being like, like protect White, like protect Whitey at all costs type. At of all costs. I just don't remember the movie. For, I need to rewatch the movie in the holidays, especially. Yeah, a crazy nice. I remember movie. like nothing about it. As soon as it snows, bro, that's that's where I'm at. A crazy nice. You picked it's animated. Yeah. So you have an animated. You match me with that. Yeah. We, we both have an animated movie. We did it. I love it. I love that movie so much. So much. <laughs> Call Whitey Duval the eccentric elf like. <laughs> it's a great. It's a great movie, bro. It's not. It's they describe it as raunchy and humorous and. uh Raunchy is the e- emphasis on the raunchy. Yeah, it's ba- for animation. It's yeah. You see titties now. You gonna see some animated titties. <laughs> and, uh, Adam Sandler was never gonna make like a wholesome animated movie. We should have all known. Very true. Um, Very true. So my ninth pick, I know. My tenth pick, as we stand, I don't know what it is. I want to put that out there. Okay. So that's gonna be like at the shot clock. Uh, at the buzzer, we'll see how we feel about it. Ninth pick, I'm going with Juno. Oh my god, I love that movie. Why did I think of Juno? Juno, I love Juno. Basically, more than anything, just my the the surrogate parent. Well, the parents that want the, the surrogate, Nasty the dad ass. is grooming her from the jump. Nasty. From, from the jump, he is grooming this girl who's going to have your baby, who's in high school, like. It said he was going to leave his wife and all this other shit. I was like, bro. He started out, if, if you like pay attention, he started out slow. Like, he's grooming. He started out real slow, got her into the music collection, got her into the instruments, eventually, like, lures her, lures her into more of the bedrooms. Like, yo. That yeah, movie. That shit was horrible. And they don't make it, like, super odd, but, like, it's, to me, it's clear cut that he's grooming her. Like, no, no, doubt very. It. As soon as he's like, they dancing and shit, and he's like, I'm leaving Vanessa. And she's like, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck are you? She's like, yeah, what yeah, are you yeah. talking well, about? What do you mean you're leaving? Who's going to take care of the baby? Like, I, I was hoping you and me, like, in his back of his mind, you know, he's thinking that. Like, weird, weirdo. You know. Weird, yeah. very repressed in the mind. Like, he gave, like, he thought he was still a teenager or whatever That's the fuck. Exactly what that felt like, especially with the. Dancing and telling her in, in the horror moment, movies, he's leaving Vanessa. Yeah, ever the way he bonded with her, 
in like a very childlike way with the movies. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's clear Vanessa was like an adult and she was like, she, yeah, she, this, was, this was her dream. Jennifer Garner, she was like, sorry to interrupt your jam session. I was going to say, if you're, if you want to cast someone to play like that kind of like adult craving child, Jennifer Garner is perfect. Yeah. She was, per- she was the perfect casting for that role. It was great. And, um, and yeah, just great. One of my all time, like Elliot Page, shout out to that movie overall is just like one of my favorite movies, but the grooming part is real. It exists. No, it for, it for sure does. I was like, this man is gross as hell. What are you doing? <laughs> Strange, so strange. That's an excellent fucking pick. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Damn, this is gonna be a fight. I usually whoop you in these. You usually do. Usually, it's all like my one, my one. Michael lost when he picked Cinderella. Ha ha ha. Um, <laughs> you got ate the fuck up. They ate you up, and I knew they was going to eat you up. Yes, I, I knew. I okay. knew they was gonna eat you as soon as I, I said yeah, I the know. brandy version of Cinderella, and you said Camilla Cabello. Can- I was like, you just you shot yourself in the foot there, sir. You did that to yourself. I absolutely washed myself on in the moment. <laughs> you did that to yourself. I was bad, Oh, I'm crying. We did a musicals draft. That's on Patreon if you want to know what we're talking about. That's funny as hell. Okay, yeah. this is my last pick. This is it. This clo- this caps it off. I'm very happy that you didn't We No overlap. I'm so None. happy about that. That's a, I'm shocked. Unless you have one here at the end. Which no, but I'm ha- mad at all your picks because I, I didn't even think. I was like, Juno is such a good fucking pick. I, I thought very hard about these picks. That movie is so good, too. Damn. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and they're good movies. That's the, yeah, exactly. Like, I really enjoyed it. If I were a flower too. going round and free, all I wanted you to be, <laughs> my sweet honey. Be. I love yeah, The Michael Sarah overlap, too, with J- Super Bad. Ju- yeah. I love that movie. Some, some okay. fun, some really Juno like that soundtrack is a sleeper. Not for me. It's in my library. Not for me. Oh, oh, all right, there you go. Damn. Damn, I'm mad. How much I love your list. <laughs> <laughs> I love your list. <laughs> ah, okay. My last pick is gonna be. This is a. It's a girl favorite. Okay, I feel like this is is required chick flick watching. Um, the House Bunny. I, uh, that's Anna Faris, right? Anna Faris, Catherine McPhee, uh, Kat Dennings. Uh, it's a stat cast. It's, it's, it's a lot of girls in that. <laughs> Shout out to Catherine McPhee, American Idol. Her voice is crazy. Indeed. And she sings a song at the end, and I love that song. Um, yeah, but it's all about it. it's all about girly who thought she got kicked out of the um, Playboy Mansion because she was too old. Ageism is what oh. this movie is about. Oh. <laughs> hey. Ageism, fat phobia, is all. It's, it's it's very crazy. Um, she turns twenty seven and she's deemed too old to be a bunny. And we all know that Hugh Hefner, crusty, could crumple him up and blow him into the wind. <laughs> and he's fucking twenty year olds and like it's all time. No, it's so pro. It's so problematic. It's so so problematic. That's crazy. And she she goes and finds the sorority, and it's all these girls who are so called misfits, and they're they're too smart and too awkward to date. And she she bimbo fies them, and it's great. And she like takes them shopping, and you know I love a good shopping montage. It's all of that, and push your tits up to the sky, and yeah, this is what mm-hmm. men like. It's all about yeah. the male gaze. It's all about the male gaze, baby. It's mm-hmm. it's one of those, but it's still so funny. She has this thing. Anna Ferris, she remembers to try uh when she wants to remember people's names. So she was meeting you and you're like, hi, I'm Michael. She was like, Michael. <laughs> That's just the way she'd say it. Yeah, she'll like crouch it. Michael. It's weird. An- Anna Ferris is a legend. It legend. is. Not just like if you know what if you know you know about some personal life shit too. Like and with the movies too and the roles and yeah, yeah. Shout out to Anna. They they said today they're making a new scary movie. I hope she's a part of that. Are they really? Work. I, I just saw that today, yeah. Romeo! Um, what? This is also what you guys miss on Patreon. My child being needy. What do you need? He's just looking at me. Anyway, continue. Just attention. You know what's crazy? I didn't have cable growing up, which I've said before, but it's relevant for this. I don't know where I got the information from or knowledge from of Hugh Hefner, but I do know growing up as a young child, growing up turning into a young man... I knew way too much about Hugh Hefner. I don't know where I got the information from, whether it was 
books or TV. Magazines and magazines. shit. Magazines. That was like the me- like the hero of men. Like it was like you you have to you're supposed to be like this. Girls like, gone wild commercials. He was the one I get yeah, a lot of shit like yeah, a lot of shit like that is where I got to know him as this kid, this young, impressionable young boy. Hugh Hefner is my, is painted out to be like, this should be your hero. Yeah, he has all these beautiful women around him. You should want to be like you. Yeah. No, that's uh that's he is crazy. a very problematic figure. <laughs> oh my god, is he problematic? That's crazy to think about. All right, uh, I, I I'm gonna close this out with. I think it wraps up my list well because there's one thing I don't have on my list. I don't have much to say about this movie except the thing I don't have on my list is blackface. So I'm gonna go with Tropic Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> God, bro, it's the way I only watched that movie once, and that's all I remember. It's all I remember about that fucking movie. That's all you need to remember. Bro. Is they my guy was real casual. Oh my god. <laughs> like this won't be a, this won't be a problem, right? No, it's fine. Crazy. That movie's not, Crazy that movie's not even that old. <laughs> like, Bro's Iron Man. <laughs> yeah. And he's a hero in our culture too, <laughs> like in like the culture of like pop culture in America. His rebrand was crazy. I when you factor in the personal life and the yeah, the yeah, his of, yeah. his that man came up from the trenches. His, yeah. That was a rebrand. Oh my god! Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's an excellent pick too. Damn, I, I gotta cap it off with that. Yeah, Tropic Thunder. I'm mad as hell, y'all. I usually I wash him in these. I don't I don't know if I, I wash came with it today. Wash. You know, with it you, today. No, you fought. You fought for this one, friend. If I lose, I'll, I'll lose honorably. That's fine. But still, hey, me, guys. Now, you, you had some. Hey, there's gonna be a lot of because I didn't know like four ish of your movies. I'm sure like our audience will know those movies. So I got I some niche picks. This is, everybody might not know, but that count, I think that I think that means that you just were really thinking about this and put some thought into it. So I think you that counts a lot. Damn, I'm still mad you got Juno. That's so do you, cool. All right, do you know your? Do you have your list written down? I do. So I had uh, Bree and Down the House. I had Dude, Where's My Car? The Hot Chick, Mean Girls, Eight Crazy Nights, Series of Unfortunate Events, White Chicks, House Bunny, The Devil Wears Prada, and Matilda. I love that Matilda pick again. Um, I had Twilight, Beauty and the Beast, Romeo and Juliet, Django Unchained, Wolf of Wall Street, Wedding Crashers, Super Bad, Home Alone, Juno, and Tropic Thunder. You might wash me, bro. Oh, we'll see. Fuck. We'll see what vote thing. for me, guys. I just vote for me. I have Mean Girls. Vote for me. All I this, have. If, if it really turns out that way, which we don't know, we'll see what we'll see what the audience picks. I'm sure they'll go into it open mindedly, but it just means that next draft you're gonna come like fucking blazing, guns blazing. No, I, I have to. I must. I must. Yeah. So I must. I'm, I'm this keeping was that a good mind. one. Yeah, it turned out great. Nice little hour. This is a good one. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy these, we have some over on Patreon. We, we're going to be doing stuff like that and playing games and stuff over there as well. Um, but we wanted to bring a little bit of that to the channel this week. Yeah. So we yeah. hope you guys enjoyed. Vote for us in the comments. By us, I mean me. <laughs> Vote for me in the comments. Um, I enjoy winning. I want to keep my winning streak. So just. <laughs> How you gonna win the first draft we put on the chip? We'll uh, hey, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Bro, you got Juno and Twilight. I'm sorry. Like, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm voting for you. So you, guys, <laughs> you got, if you guys are kind and benevolent, vote for me. Um, I think I'll be voting. <laughs> I love your lips, bro. That's fine. And let us know about ones we didn't talk about. Like, I want to hear what you guys have to say. We we had 20 movies we talked about here. There's so many more. There's no, so many for more. so many. There's so many. So leave those comments. If you guys have any ideas of like drafts and like different stuff you want us to bring to the channel or Patreon, drop that in the comments as well. But thank you guys so much for watching. Follow us everywhere and take away my mic. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.